you, Brother Baxter. Good evening, friends. My heart jumps for joy when I think that people... I'm living in a day when people are interested enough in God to sit in a meeting like this and wait through the afternoon for the evening service. That makes me happy to know that, that our Savior still has people who love Him that much. And for just the a service is no more than what ours is, but yet there's enough interest there and love of God in people's hearts to make them want to sit and wait for the services. That's marvelous. I know that God will surely bless you, everyone. Now, although the, we cannot accommodate the people in churches that come to the meeting uh, for seating uh, room and so forth, but my favorite place to have services is in the church. The church is a place where the angels of God are encamped around. And the public places, most of the time, there's all kinds of violence and wickedness goes on and becomes a place. Now, that is not a superstition. I can feel it and know it when we come into the meeting that there's, there's a wicked angel. Many people speak of God. And what's an amazing thing to me, friends, that many times people speaking of God know so little about him. They, they speak of it as, they know it as a joy, and they know they're saved. They are. But when it comes to dealing with spiritual things, that's altogether a different phase. It has nothing to do with that joy that comes from God. The joy is just like, well, it, it's, a, I would say, the bubbles on top of the water, you see. That's wonderful. It's good to bubble dance, as we would call it. Rejoice and the blessings fall upon you. But when you come down face to face with spirit, why it's so much different, you'd be surprised. That's right. And now, I don't want to keep you no longer than I can possibly help. I want to read some scripture and go right straight into our service and do all that I can to help you tonight. Uh, I can only be able to help you as God will permit it done by me. And God can only help you as your faith will permit him to operate in you. And now that I might be sure to get this clear that operations of spiritual gifts are not for an individual, but the operation of spiritual gifts is to go into the church and to... Uh, to edify the church. See, it's not for me. It'd be possible I could stand here sick and God would be healing the people out there and I know about it. See? And it would never touch me. See? It's just a channel it works through. You understand? The acoustics are much better here. Can you hear me up there in the back all right? Well, that's fine. And it just works through like that. See? And it's a pass right, it's just the flow of the, I believe that even the Holy Spirit and angels and all are just attributes of God. It's just a part of God. It's just makeup, just part of it that went off his spirits and so forth that he created to be his helpers around in his great office of glory. And I believe they're just like secretaries and so forth that help carry on the master's work and they come to the earth for us earthly people and, and they uh, certain times and certain I believe that we must be born for these things I, I do that I believe that we're all baptized with the Holy Spirit and brought into the body and then we become sons but then after sons there's a placing of sons or the adoption of sons a son was born in Israel and then after eight days he was circumcised and become an Israelite, but he was born of the father. And then if that child was given a tutor, Galatians teaches it, and after he was raised up to a certain age and, and he became very faithful to the father's work and everything and was a very fine boy and was eligible to fall heir. Now the father didn't know what he would be when he was born. He might be a gangster. 
He had, might be slowful in father's business. He couldn't turn his kingdom and his things, his work over to that boy. But when the boy proved to be a right boy and the tutor, which in our case is the Holy Spirit, that takes word to the father and gives a report of what we do, then if we be found faithful for so long, like the child was, then he was taken out into the public square and a purple robe was put on him, and there was an, a law of adoption. And then that boy was adopted by the same father who gave him birth. And he was brought into the family, and then he wasn't only a, only a son, but he was heir, co-heir with the father of every possession he had. You ever said of that, Dr. Bonfer? Now that's what's the marriage of Pentecostal Church tonight. There's too much difference. As soon as you get saved, you start this way, and a little trial comes along, you fall off, and you go this way and this way, and ups and downs and fusses and fights and carries on, until how could God trust you with those things? To adopt you into the kingdom of God, into his possession, give you heirs to all the spiritual benefits. of If the church would only held together and quit fussing and splitting up and arguing over little baptisms and things like that, you'd been a lot better off. And one church against the other. See, that isn't son. God can't trust you. Divine gifts are very sacred. And remember, a person could send their soul to hell with one. If you'll notice on the platform on my cases, my patients, I'm very careful of what I say. I weigh every word. I find the condition of that soul before I say anything. Our meetings go to end now in two more nights for this. Someday I hope to come to New York where I could stay long enough so it could get spread out far enough that we could get a real meeting. Now, but Moses is a prophet. God made him a prophet. And God trusted Moses because he was born to be a prophet. God foreordained that when he told Abraham he'd bring his people out. I believe Moses was ordained man. He was born to a proper child. And when he came out, what a marvelous boy. And he had his ups and downs. But in the wilderness, God told Moses, go speak to the rock and it'll bring forth its water. Instead of Moses speaking to the rock, he smote the rock. And that was one time that God's complete program was broken. Christ was only smitten once. We don't smite him anymore. We speak to him. But Moses, as the rock had done been smitten, smote it again. It didn't bring his water. He smote it again. He was a prophet. He had the power and authority from God to do whatever he wanted to do in that manner. See? But he broke God's commandments. God brought forth the water in answer to his prophet. But then he dealt with Moses later about that. He wouldn't let him go over in the promised land. You remember that? You remember that young prophet by the name of Elisha who was the successor of Elijah? And he went bald-headed when he was just a young man. Some little children run behind him saying, Oh, bald-head, oh, bald-head, why didn't you grow up like Elijah? And in doing so, it angered that prophet. Maybe turning around, he had bald, no, maybe a hair on his head, turned around and looked, and he knew it was right. The children were calling him bald-head, but it angered him. And he put a curse on those children in the name of the Lord. And two she-bears come out of the woods and kill 42 little innocent children. Now, anyone knows that's not the nature of the Holy Spirit. But it was an angered prophet. You had to be careful. Examine every case. Now, I wish just watching the clock so we can be sure to get away in time. I want to read this scripture found in the 18th chapter of First Kings. Elijah, one of the mightiest prophets of the day, the 18th chapter, and we'll begin at the 36th verse, when we find it Jehovah versus Balaam, where the true and false prophets came together, and there the great warfare was on, and Elijah said, let's see who's God, let the God that answers by far be God. Now listen what this, this reading of the scripture. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these 
thing at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell, and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Shall we bow our heads? Dear Heavenly Father, faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. And the reading tonight, as we're reading it, thou art here to listen. And our minds travel back to many hundred years ago, when it was a controversy between Balaam, the god of the world, or the god of that age, and the true Jehovah God. And when Elijah, thy prophet, was so discouraged and set up on the mountain as I command. And then, when the time came, when you showed him a vision of what was going to happen, for truly it is written here, I have done all this, says Elijah, at thy word. He saw what was going to happen. He knew it had to happen. We're taught in the scriptures that Elijah was not an immortal being. He was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly. Father, we thank thee tonight for this marvelous gift of the Holy Spirit. It's now in the church moving as it was in the days when Peter was on the housetop and saw the vision. When in John Mark's house, when he was in prison, the angel came down and delivered him. Paul, preaching, said to the man that was crippled, I perceive you have faith. Jesus Christ healed you. Stand on your feet. The man was made whole. We see the vision that he had out there on the stormy sea that night. The Macedonian call. Agnes, the prophet, coming down from Jerusalem, catching Paul there. Or the four daughters of Philip had prophesied. And here come Agnes, a vindicated prophet, taking the girdle string from around Paul and bound his hands and said, Thus saith the Lord. Oh, God, those brethren have gone on to glory, seal their testimony in their life's blood. And here are the days dawning again. You take your man, but never your spirit. And here's your spirit living among us today, moving in and out among us. The great gospel age, just the drawing to the end of the world. The fig tree putting forth its bud. So we'll look down in Jerusalem tonight and see that flag, the oldest flag in the world flying. The first time it's been flown for 2,500 years. Truly, the fig tree is putting forth its bud. And now we here in America, blessed for the Holy Spirit begin to fall in the last days, calling the people from the Gentiles for his name. How we thank you to be here in this church that's represented this message for years and years. Founders and many of those sleeping out under the dust of the earth. But one of these glorious daybreaks, Jesus shall come. And all sorrow be banished and tears wiped away. Those immortal souls that's resting out in paradise shall come forth like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We shall appear here on earth and then be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. It does not yet appear what kind of a body we'll have, but we'll have one like his, or we shall see him as he is. No more healing service, then, for we are living with the... The Son of Righteousness is healing in his wings. We shall abide under the shadows of his wings throughout ceaseless ages. Set down by the evergreen trees where the leaves of the tree are for the healings of the nations. Arms will be stacked. The smoke will dry up on the battlefield. There will be no more wars or disappointments. Oh, eternal God, let this meeting tonight be more than a healing service. Let it be a healing for the body of Christ bringing us together in one place in Christ Jesus. 
that the great manifestation of the Holy Ghost could go out here and visit these sons of God, inspire their lives, that there would be such meetings take place across New York here, and cause this great city to shake under the power of the Holy Spirit, the impact that might fall here, granted eternal God. We know these things work together for good to them that love you. Now, O Lord God of heaven, as Elijah of old called for mercy, so I call tonight and we all call together. Hear us, Lord. Give us a memorial meeting tonight. Grant it, Lord. One that will be long remembered because the blessed Holy Spirit will come down into our midst and will vindicate Jesus Christ's presence by speaking the secret of the heart, healing the sick, the lame, the blind, the halt. May there be such a joy among these people until this street will be crowded and it a bit like it was on the day of Pentecost. Each one with joy bells ring in their heart. The Holy Spirit is shrouding and going forth with a new vision like it never had before. Grant it, Lord Jesus, for we ask it in your name and for your glory. Amen. He is so wonderful. And one of the prophets just, he called him the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Counselor. And he said he's just wonderful. His heart just got so full of joy when he saw him, he could only say, he's wonderful. Now, just a little testimony. I will pick up tonight in our journey overseas as I left off last night with the healing of Miss Nightingale. I just wonder how much impact her testimony has in South Africa when we get there. Such a noted person. She's the great granddaughter of the founder of the Red Cross and a noted woman. And now, ever since the hour I believe my feet touched the foreign soil, the Holy Spirit never left me. It was constantly there speaking even things. We'd go down in town together, Ernstovic and Gothenburg and many of the places in Sweden and, and Finland. And no sooner we'd get down in town, the Holy Spirit would come down and say, now, for instance, one day, Brother Lindsay and I were sitting there and some of us talking and I said, Brother Lindsay, on the road back, we're going to see two ladies. They'll come out dressed in black and they'll walk out on this side of the street and they're going to come over holding their hands out like that. They want to know what's wrong with them. I said, we won't be able. He said, is that? I said, yes, that'll happen just before we get in. We've been gone about 20 minutes, and here come the ladies dressed in black. And we, I, he said, well, uh, Brother Brandon, that's certainly amazing. I said, well, just in a, a little bit from now, I said, there's going to be a man with a blue suit on a white hat that's going to come down the stairs step to our left and he's going to try to get me to go up and pray for his wife, which is laying sick. Well, we went up about three squares and turned to the left and started down. Here come the man now, the blue suit on, a white hat, and only go. And now, it's just something materializes in front of you. It speaks here at the platform. It speaks wherever God desires it to speak. I have no control of it. I remember I spoke this before I went over, right in the same pulpit, I believe. That when I would, the first that came to me, I was on a train, in fact, my mother's house, was going to Miami, Florida, to have a meeting there in a the tent. I was going to help out, uh, this, back about three years ago, I guess, something like that. A minister was there holding a tent meeting. I went to stay with him for two nights. And on the road down, I had a vision of a little boy. I watch your Bible, you know of a little boy that would be about eight years old, and the little boy would uh, have a boy, a little bob-like hair and dress very poorly, and his little, sort of have an accident, his little foot would be run through his sock. He had on a very odd-dressed child. I said, he'd be killed in an accident, and he'll be laying by the side of the road dead when I find him. But the Lord God is going to give him his life back again. And I made that statement at the platform before about 7,000 people that night. And the next night, before I could get in, they wouldn't let me 
come in. I believe Brother Bosworth was there at the time. You remember the case. And um, so they, Brother Bosworth was amazed. I seen a man get thrown by a horse in the meeting that night, and he broke his arm. He's back over in the meeting, and I said, uh, uh, there sits the man right back there now with a white shirt on. I said, stand up, sir, and stretch forth your arm for Jesus Christ to heal you. Out on his arm. <laughs> he was healed, and Brother Bosworth was so amazed. I remember that was his first time I believe I've ever seen that like that. So the, a little boy got drowned at about four or five years old. And the father wouldn't permit the undertaker to take him until he had been in the meeting the night before and thought that that was, might be his little son. So they met me out there, and he was screaming and going on. So some of the ministers said, we can't take him over there. But I said, let's go over and look at the little boy. Perhaps it is. And I said, I think this little boy must have been hit by an automobile because he's so mashed up. But I said, however, I'll be glad to go look at the little fellow. And we went back out into the big some kind of a park there where some duchess or something let them have the place to put the, the tent up. And so then I went back over there, and there's a little black-headed boy, very nicely dressed. It, I said, no, that isn't the little lad, because this little boy's got brown hair, and he's, uh, he's uh, kind of a good-sized boy, about eight or nine years old. Pretty good boy. And I said, this little boy isn't dressed, or he doesn't look like the child. And I said, it's a rocky country. There's a lot of cedar trees. I said, it isn't, uh, and pines, I said, it isn't this country, it isn't positionally lame, it just has to be exactly the way it shows. And um, I said, it isn't just exactly right. Now, and that's the major and the real way that God wants to operate this. Now, this is just his permissive will this way. It's just when I come here and pray and cry and beg to him before coming until that is laying so close it forces into it. And you see the vision, and it'll cut off. But when it comes upon God's this perfect will, it just moves down, and sometimes I'm out for about two hours. You see this. And He sends me different parts of the country and different places. That's just every time perfect. And here, it might call diseases and so forth, and it might see what's wrong with the people, and maybe what's going to happen. But it takes constant pressing or yielding to the Spirit to go into it. And maybe it'll just drop in that and drop out. Drop in, drop out. It'll cut off. You've noticed it like that. It'll go and speak for a few minutes and drop out. If I keep on talking to the patient, it'll drop in again maybe come out. Yes. But when he takes me in there, it, I just stay in there. So it's over. My wife's sitting present now. and knows sometimes you're out maybe for two hours. Not a bit of breath. You can't be your heart beating, but no breath. And it's when you become into another, another world. Now, so I offered prayer for the little lad and went on. Then on my, we went on services. We got to up. Mrs. Florence Nightingale had been healed, and we went on into Finland, uh, Helsinki, and went up to Kopio that night. And we'd had a, a, about two services at Kopio or three. My, the place, the people, the Laplanders and all that packed in there. And the Holy Spirit, the angel of the Lord, as it would come down, it would move. There'd be an interpreter standing here, and it'd move out there upon the people. And I'd say, I see a woman stand up with a certain, certain thing, and what she's done, and where she's been, and so forth like that. I didn't even know their language. And then when it would drop out, the interpreter would be speaking. I'd say, is that lady? And she'd raise, screaming with her hands up like that, and people would just throw their crutches away, raise up out of the chairs. And that it was God to them. And they just, they just worshiped right in with the Spirit, and they received. Why, one night there, they just piled up crutches and things to try to hold them around me from the hole like this. They want to take a picture of it. Some old canes and clubs and everything as they've been walking with. Then, I remember I'd been fasting. It was just like tonight. Uh, Fridays is the fast day. has been for me for a long time. Then I was up on the Copio, uh, up at the tower. I forget the name of the tower. And they were all up there singing, all oh, them poor little fins. It's such a pathetic uh, thing there. Those Russians just beat them down and cursed them. And, and uh, we went up there on a little old train. And honest, it was pathetic. They burnt wood instead of coal. And, and if you ladies here in New York had to dress the way those poor women do over there. It would certainly take some of the prestige out of it. 
See them young ladies, big boots on, dresses that thick and everything. There's no foolishness about them. Everything, even their songs are in mind. Everything, since everything they get, they have to trust God for. And they're honest and good and sweet and kind. And if they see God moving like that, their hearts are just melt in them. And they just throw up their hands and all their keys, just Jesus, thank you, Jesus, like, you know, just with their, uh, just scream out. And I will never forget, it was in the tower and they were singing on Golgotha. There was an Englishman from England down there who was drinking. When we went down, we led him to Christ. He got so stricken by the song and we're trying to lead him to Christ. Then I said to, to the brethren that was with me, my manager, I said, something fixing to happen. I could just tell there was something, the Holy Spirit trying to condition you to see, watch how far man in himself can get away. I said, something fixing to happen. I don't know what it is. And after this vision of the little boy, I guess it's wrote in 10,000 Bibles right now. I told him, I said, write it in your Bible. Find out if it isn't right. Somewhere that little boy is going to be raised. And I promised him there that night as did other places, it'll be in the Voice of Healing, the magazine, Brother Lindsay's magazine, when it comes out. See if it doesn't happen and the boy isn't just that way. I don't know where it's going to be, but he prepared me and showed me a vision not to weary when this comes, to walk out there. Well, it was almost two years since the vision. Well, as I was coming down the hill, we noticed way ahead of us was a crowd of people on the road. A car had struck two little boys. And there's not many cars in Finland. I imagine it was a 35 model Ford, probably sold for about $2,500. And um, gasoline, about a dollar and a half a gallon, I suppose, would be here. So without any money, you know how, how scarce, they go their taxi cab, a horse driven. And so some other brethren was coming down in cabs. We had the pictures of it all in photochrome colors. And then when I looked down there, and a car, a, a model, a V8, 35 model V8, green, two-door sedan, old, shabby-looking car. A two little boys was running across the road coming from school. And they got there, and this car was driving at a terrific speed, about 60 or 70 miles an hour coming. And the little boys got excited, and one started one way and one the other. And the driver whirled his car like this to miss one little boy, and when he did, he struck the one to the left, right by the chin, and just picked him up and threw him against the side of the curb and slammed up against the tree and concussed his little brain, and, and the other one hit him right solid like that, run over him, mashed him up under the wheel, and the wheels were spinning so fast and the driver lost control like, he, like that. Well, he lost control and the car jumped up over some rocks and went way down through the field and wrecked down into a pile of rocks down there. And it run over the little boy and the wheel was spinning so much so he kicked his little body way up in the air like that and he just plumped when he fell down. Well, they laid him out there and he was dead and they put the coats over him and things. And we come by, we couldn't get into the crowd because across the road there was hundreds of people had gathered out there. And one of the chief men, I don't know, something like a mayor of the city or something, was there. And so as soon as they come up, Mrs. Isaacson, she was a American born Finnish woman who was given the interpretation. Many of you might know Mrs. Isaacson, and uh, someone who knows her. And um, how many knows Miss Isaacson in here? Now, see, that's very fine. Several of you know her. Well, she was the interpreter at, at the meeting. And she was my, she wrote me a letter not long ago, said, here's your voice to Finland. <laughs> a very fine lady. And so she said, Brother Bram said, the, the crowd just now said, there's that miracle worker from America. Let's see what he'll do about this. See just how carnal the people's mind can get like that. So they went over there and they come back crying. So, and Brother Lindsay went over and I've never seen a poor brother cry so in my life as he come back just a weeping. And I said, what's the matter, Brother Lindsay? He said, oh, Brother Brandon. He said, don't look at it. He said, it's the most pathetic thing. A little boy just crushed the pieces. And he had our own little boy in America. And I had my own Billy Paul sitting here. And I, my little boy, I didn't want to look at him. Brother Moore come back crying. I, Miss I said, you ought to see him, Brother Ben. All well, I thought of them, brothers, and their children at home, and we've been over there quite a little bit. I thought, of course, I was homesick. I love my family like any other man loves their family. I'm leaving right now the sweetest little thing, a little girl, baby, six months old, and she is grooming at me the other day. I tell you, my heart was full apart nearly. She won't know me when I get back, but 
God will fix some way for us. <laughs> he has. And my little Rebecca sitting up there now, looking down at me. My, she won't even go to sleep at night unless she's laying on my arm. And I, I'm a temperamental person, and I, I love my wife and family, and it's hard. But Jesus said, Who will not forsake his own and follow after me? He's not worthy to be called my disciple. I don't have very much to offer him. That's just a little sacrifice, and I think of his great redeeming love. But I'm all that I've got. I happily give it to him, that's all. But no matter what we'd ever do, I know we'd never be worthy to be called his disciple. But if I knock on the door that day when I leave this earth, if he'll just let me in, I'll be well paid for. And I went over to look at the little fella. And oh my, I've never seen such a sight. That poor little fella there, his mouth open, his tongue hanging out, and his little eyes set back, his little hands like that, and his foot pulled through that sock and little panty waist on like we used to wear when we were little children and, and, and his all foot through that sock poorly dressed and there he laid there and his little mouth open. I took up his little pulse and it was gone. And I put my hand on his heart, it was gone. I said, poor little fella. I turned around and started weeping, turned away and just like somebody put his hand on me like that. I looked around to see who it was and there was nobody standing there. I started to walk on and I just couldn't make my step. The Holy Spirit, you see, it didn't warn me, but that shock was coming, you see. I'd have missed it all together if it hadn't been a vision. So then I turned around. I looked back at that child again. I said, take that off his face. They took it off his face. And I said, I, I've seen that boy somewhere. I said, it looks like I, I've seen him. I said, ask, we had about 15 ministers with us. I said, Sister Eisen, ask those ministers if he belongs to their church. She spoke to them and finished. No. I said, has he been in the prayer line? No. I said, something, I, I know I've, I've missed seeing that, that little boy. I've seen him somewhere. I said, it looks like that. And just then, it began to come to me. I've seen that little funny haircut, them little brown eyes set. That poorly dressed, that foot run through that sock. I said, I know him. I said, Brother Moore, look in your Bible. And Brother Lindsay said, What do you mean? I said, Back on the fly leaf. I said, That's that little boy that I've seen two years ago in that vision. See them rocky country there and them pine trees? Oh, my. All oh, devils out of hell and all these forces can't stop at them. The time's there. That's the spoken word of God ready to come to pass. Nothing can stop it. And we got the little boy and I laid him in the lap there. I said, now you watch. I said, this little boy will be alive again in a few minutes. I knelt down. I said, Heavenly Father, way over in the homelands in America, when you spoke to me one night in the vision, said this little boy, here it is, just exactly the way you said it. Then, Lord, here the prayer of your servant. I said, death. In the name of the Lord Jesus, according to the vision he gave me in America, give back the life to this boy. The little boy raised up Norman. Well, this is normal as he could be without a broken place on his body anywhere. Now, I told that story right here in this, in this tabernacle. How many remembers me saying that before I left this, before I left to go over there? That, that would come to pass, see? And it did. I don't have time to finish in one little instant just before her. I told her because it was getting late. I don't want to take too much of your time. I want to pray for you. And after that got scattered, I tell you the next night, two or three city blocks, you couldn't even get around the place for the people. They had the soldiers out there. When that was noise abroad, tomorrow night I'll get the results of the other little boy that was taken to the hospital. But this, I'll never forget that night when they try and take me into the line. Those sins had seen God moving. That was all. Oh, they were just thrilled. I started in the line with some soldiers pushing me, two in front and two in the back, and the people stand there. They just stand like that, and the tears just roll down their cheeks when you pass by. Oh, my. Oh, Christian Americans. Mm. I wonder sometimes. Then I'm standing there. Some of them Russians that could cross the line. When you're born in Russia, you can only go 40 miles from your birthplace. You have to have a visa. 
And some of those Russians stand there, they'd stand there and they'd see the glory of God. The tears just roll down their cheeks like that. And they'd run to those sins and those sins and put their arms around the Russians and hug one another. There's the answer. Any power of Almighty God that'll let a, a, a Russian hug a sin, or a sin hug a Russian. See, they wasn't angry at one another. They didn't have to, they wasn't angry. They love one another. And Christ is the answer now. Let people quit their meanness and serve Christ, but they'll never do it as long as these kingdoms are the kingdoms of Satan. They'll never be. They'll fight until Jesus comes. Don't you believe that? What's the matter? Is the little boy or child got sick or something up there? You take him out. I've seen him leaving with a little boy. I thought maybe he had gotten sick or something. All right. Notice, going in that night, they were pushing me along. One of the, the people, I started through a little room there, and, and the, the door of the lady's restroom opened, and a poor little thin stepped out there, a little girl. I never seen such a look inside. And she looked at me, bowed her little head like that. I just stood still, and the soldier just started pushing me on. I shut my head, no. The other two went on to in front of me to go open the door. And I knew she wanted to talk to me. I looked at her. She had a big brace around her like this, a big metal brace. And one leg was shorter than the other, and it was limp, just hanging loose on the inside of the braces that run down on a big high-built shoe that had a, a place in the toe here that come up, a strap went over her shoulder and hooked in the back of this big brace. And when this leg was here, when she would let her weight down, it would hit on this brace, you see, and she had two crutches, and she'd set her crutches out like this, and she'd throw her little shoulder, and that would pull that limb out, and she'd make her step like that as she pulled out. She's just about this high, and a poor little deer, her little skirt's ragged. I found out later on she was a little war orphan. Her mother and dad were killed in the war. And there she was in that condition. And she looked at me and, and she bowed her little head. She thought she'd done something wrong when she'd come out like that. And she looked up at me so pathetic and dropped her little head. I, I motioned to her. And uh, they'd give me some of that old money they had. And all life would all get in the auditorium. I'd slip out and... And get that candy, you know, and give to them little kitties. And I had a string of them who stood by the wall and followed me. And the little things, little girls, they'd pull their little skirts out like this and say, Ketus, thank you, you know. Ketus means thank you. And she'd, they'd pull their little skirts out like that and thank me, you know, for the candy. And I'd go on down and see another bunch, and I had a lot of that old money, you know. I'd just get it in all that I could do. I just love little old kitties anyway. I water them. And um, so then I. Uh, for, never forget this. She'd come over to me, putting her little crutches out like this, and she'd walk, and she'd put her little crutches out and walk again. And she got right up to where I was, like that. I just thought I'd just stand still and see what she's going to do. Child, like about 10, 11 years old. And she got up to where I was, and she picked up my coat like this, just put it in her little hand, raised it up, and kissed me on the coat pocket dropped it back down. I looked up at her, or she looked up at me rather, and I looked down to her. And she had a little blonde hair and them little baby blue eyes. She looked up, her little lips was quivering, her tears dropping off her little cheeks. She pulled her little crutches out like this and she called her little skirt. She said, Jesus, thank you for letting her. Oh, my, look like my heart was bigger than I was. I looked out there and I saw a vision of that child going walking away without her crutches. Her brain. I said, darling, I can't make you understand me. I said, you're healed, honey. It, uh, Jesus makes it. And the soldier kept pushing me on like that, you know. And I got on in. We had a meeting. And then I called out a bunch of prayer cards. And, and we were praying and, and, and getting the people uh, through the line. And after a while, I, Howard, my brother, he comes to time to leave. I said, well, let's call just four or five more. And so there had been such a marvelous thing done. So many had been healed. And the, in God's wise providence, when I called for the next number of lines, I heard something rattle, 
and she had to make plan for us coming to the platform. Oh, what a feeling. There she comes. And I said, Sister Isaacson, come near. Just quote my words now. And so the little girl come up to me just so happy. You know, I said, Sweetheart, you're the little girl that met me out there in the hall. And then Mrs. Isaacson, of course, talking, you know, giving the interpretation. She, and then she knew it was. I said, Jesus heals you, honey. Your respect for his son out there and for his servant, for the angel of the Lord. I said, your deep reverence and respect heals you, honey. I said, you're well. Now, you have some of them to go over there and take those braces off of you. And when you're taking that off, hold your hands on your hip, this. And as you pull the braces off, let your little hand slide just about the distance that your leg is short. Come back and show me. So I went on call the next one. And we're standing there, and the angel of the Lord came down, was showing them what was wrong. And then just at that time, I heard a noise. Now look, here she comes running across the platform, the braces and crutches above her head, stomping her little feet up the steps in the auditorium. She went back down just as hard as she could go. Oh, I think amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. It was grace that taught my heart to fear. It was grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first see. A star is Heavenly Father. Some glorious day when life is finished, the last prayer meeting is held. The great day comes when the church rises in victory and triumph, goes up to meet the Lord in the air. And we be crowning the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Oh God, I like to walk out on my little porch door somewhere up there. Look coming up the road and see Him, Lord, coming to sit around the porch. We need each other by the hand and walk down to the sea of life. No hurry. There's no more prayer meetings. You don't have to rush from here to there. Talk over with these thousands of dear people, Lord, that receive thy grace and be healed. Now, Father, as I think of that poor little ragged thing, walking the streets with her crutches, no doubt many times her little dirty hands ringing in her eyes, crying for a piece of bread. And here we throw plenty out in the garbage can that would take care of her. Oh, have mercy, dear God. Some glorious day Jesus will come. We're just about to go into the dark lands down yonder beneath the earth. For them lepers will be sitting at the gate. Poor little dark children living off of pad of animals and whatever they can get help dear father and now tonight here in this great mammoth city where the wealth of the world almost lay towering buildings like great canyons as we walk through the street but someday up through the We'll see the Son of God walk out there and say, Time shall be no more. Then the earth quakes and there won't be one stone left upon another. Oh, to thank Lord that we'll go home, man. It's all over. That glorious event. But while we're here tonight proclaiming in our humble way the best that we know how, the redeeming love of Christ who came from glory all the way down here, gave himself an innocent substitute for we guilty sinners, and his blood tonight pleads for our sins. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Lord, look tonight upon this sick bunch of people. Some of them are here with cancer, heart trouble, and diseases that's going to kill them right away. They can't live, Lord. 
let you help them. Doctors just give them up. Oh, God, have mercy and heal them. Also, there are the crippled sitting here. They may live a normal lifetime, Lord, but they're prisoners. Help them to receive tonight. They may be healed, too. And maybe that worst prisoner there is in the building, that sinner, far off. Prisoner of hope, like an eagle that would beat his wings till his weary eyes would fall back in the cage he's captured. He's a heavenly bird, soars high in the air, and here he is caged up, looking up to the heavens for where he wants to be and be free. Then the scene falls back exhausted from beating his wings. That's a horrible sight, but oh, what a much greater horrible sight it is to look down these streets tonight and see men and women who were created to be sons and daughters of God. To see them running into booze joints and honky tonks, beating their head and wings against the bars trying to find relief when they ought to be soaring into heaven by the Holy Spirit. Oh, what prisoners are. May something be done tonight that will cause them to look up and say, Lord Jesus, unlock this prison. Let me spread forth my wings. Fly away from this place. Grant it, Lord. May every person in here that's bound but sense bound existence, only trusting on what they can see, hear, taste, feel, or smell, may they fall away from that tonight. Go up into the realms of the higher. May this church literally rock with the power of God. Now, and the Holy Spirit, may every angel that you've ordained to be at this meeting tonight take his place now. And he by the sick and the afflicted, by the sinner, by the skeptic. Lord, send the angel that stood by thy servant. And proclaim these things that I have spoken to be true, that they'll know it don't come from a man, it comes from God. Hear me, Father, hear me, for I ask it in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. What he is, why, friend, if he turns me down that day and tells me, say, William Brandon, you can't come in. If there is such a thing as having this, and I have to go away to the lower regions of the law, I, I, I believe that that love that's anchored in my heart will live on, and I'll look up and say, I love you, Lord Jesus, just the same. Or if there was no heaven to go to, I'd still make my choice to serve the Lord Jesus. Or even what remunerations there is here on earth from his blessings, I still long to serve him. I want everybody to be reverent. I want you to enter right in now to the spiritual realm. I want you to believe and pray and hold with me now while I'm here. This is a church house. The meetings are to raise up into a place now to work be far beyond the other place. And you people up there. You pray up there in that audience. Believe God. Believe that God will move up into them balconies up there tonight. Back in there. Down through this way. Over the audience everywhere. And just to shroud this building. I believe he'll do it. I believe he will. Now here he's more willing to do it than you are to receive it. Could you imagine his Brother Bosworth's expression to this ocean out here piled up in one tube about two foot high or two foot across? What a pressure there would be trying to find one little crevice to leap through. Now I divide that by 10,000 times and you'll find the pressure of the Holy Spirit trying to find that little crevice in the heart that true faith can reach into there and to heal you. How would glorify the Father for the death of the Son of God? And I'll give you the, and don't, just don't say it, mean it, see, and then start praying. Now that's your, that's your testimony. Then start praying, 
until the appropriated faith has entered your heart. And when, your, when the faith has entered into your heart, then God will pull me from here to you. And if I told you out there your conditions and what was wrong with you and what God had done and what he would do, would you believe it? You'd have to if it was the truth, wouldn't you? Then if the Holy Spirit come down and told me to tell you, well, if I say, go on your road, the Lord bless you, I don't know what will happen. There's nothing happening. But when I speak to you saying, the Lord Jesus hath now, thus saith the Lord, made you whole, you're healed. I don't care what condition you've been in. Watch what happens then. And whatever you're told to do, go do it. No matter what it is, you go do it. Here a few days ago, a lady was told she was in a dying condition. And a horrible at that. And so she was, I said, now you go. And told her what had happened. She was quivering. And she said, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, yes, sir. I said, look, now at a... About three days from now, you're going to be crossing the street, and a little newsboy is going to hit you and almost knock you down. You're going to be very provoked at it at first. You're going to turn around and try to, and you look up, and there's going to be a big clock and a tower striking 12 o'clock. I said, when that happens, you know I've told you the truth, and your cancer, you're going to have some time with it, but you're going to get well. And it's just exactly that way. The woman's well on the road to recovery now. The doctor can't find no more of the cancer. Than that. So now, now be reverent. Now I can do nothing in myself, but it's what the Holy Spirit speaks. That can I do? How many understand that now? That can I do? When the Holy Spirit says do it. Now. If the organist, pianist, or the organ, or whatever you wish, either one, I want you softly, if you can, that glorious song, Only Believe. <laughs> Paul Rader wrote that song not long ago in California when he was going home to meet Jesus. He called for his brother Luke. He said, Luke, we've been through many a tough fight together. But said, parting time is near at hand, Luke. He said, but think of it. In five minutes from now, I'll be standing in the presence of Jesus Christ, clothed in his righteousness. Closed his eyes and went out to me. That's the way I want to go. And he's high with a harness on me. Yes, sir. I want to go like, like one of the brethren of old, one of the gallant heroes of God, die preaching the gospel. I believe it. I've lived by it. I want to die by it. God be blessed now while we bow our Dear Father, come near, I pray. Help thou thy humble servant at this time. That I might know thy divine will and might be able to comfort thy people. And may the angel of God who met me that night in the room, Lord, he never said his name, but you know who it was. He claimed he was sent from you. And now may he come near and minister to these people through your humble servant. For I ask it in the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. I'm just a little late. I always like to close the service for 10 if possible. Now, if you'll be real reverent now, everybody be talking up to God, praying, believing with all your heart. God will bring it to pass. Don't you believe that? I just reverently, while I'm speaking with the sister, of course, first, you've got to contact her spirit. See, she is a spirit. I am a spirit. And we've got to contact each other. I want you back in here to believe with all your heart. <clears throat> Mother, this is 
sure a lovely tabernacle, isn't it? You're just a little bit nervous, you see. I just want to talk to you just a moment. Don't be excited. Now, we are are strangers. I don't know you. I don't believe I've ever seen you in all my life. But we're we're strangers, and we we're here trying to. I am trying to be God's servant to do something with the gift of God that would help you to believe God. Do you understand that? Yes, you do. And if I can do that by God's divine gift, I will feel then as much has been accomplished. Now you're you're suffering or sick and of course, Jesus healed you back 1,900 years ago, but it'll it'll have to be something to quicken your faith to bring you up into that place, to where you can accept it. Now, many read on the Bible here and they say, "Yes, the Lord said this." Now, that's the word of the Lord, isn't it? That's the word of the Lord. Now, that is to the masses and multitudes. It's God's word, and we must believe that. Because it is God's word. Then that's to the multitude. Now, then if he should take me as his servant, and now he never spoke this directly to you, but it's just the same as directly to you. But he never said Mrs. So and so at a certain age and a certain time, and me. But then he has uh, prophetic gifts that he sent into his church in these last days to stimulate the faith of the people, then if he should speak through me, that would be secondarily, but it would be his word just the same. Now to doubt this written word would be sin. And to doubt his spoken word would be sin. Now, you must be prepared, and all you're in the prayer line, to believe. And if you do not believe, I just step out of the line because be it sure you'd be worse off than you ever was in all your life. See? Or he said, go in, what no more? That's disbelief. Unbelief is sin. Go and sin no more. Let the worst thing come up on you. He wasn't talking about some of your moral acts. You're talking about your unbelief. He that believeth not is condemned already. See? It's your unbelief is what condemns you. God don't send you to hell because you're a sinner. He sends you to hell because you reject your provision made for heaven. See? You just reject that. You don't have to do a thing to go to hell. Only thing you do is just reject Jesus. Who fails to believe his word, that's all you have to do. These Satan's always put a question mark across that. But that is just the the Lord. I guess you wonder why I'm stalling. See, I can feel that impact of faith moving. Just be reverent as it's getting near me. Now the angel of the Lord is coming near this platform right now. I can feel it moving down. It's coming from this side, get right this way. Right down this way. Now be reverent. I trust that before the services are closed, he'll appear visibly. Now he will before certain people. Sometimes it's before masses and multitudes. But you remember the, the wise man, what did they see and they followed to Jesus? Nobody else saw it. They passed out right over the observatory, every planetarium, is that right? And every city had a planetarium. They kept time to the stars, is that right? And isn't it strange that them wise men went right through city after city, city after city, following a star that even the stargazers and the men in the planetarium and telling the time and things never saw nothing of it? They were looking for it. That's where it's at. You get what you expect. Now, little mother. I just want to speak to you just a second now again.
you're aware that something's going on. That's just anointing. It's just moving in. Now, if this audience that they might see, and a woman of your age would have no right to say anything wrong but what would be true. Now, if there's a feeling that's moving to you now, warm, welcome, sweet, glow. isn't that right? If it is, raise up your hand. I see the, the angel of the Lord is at the platform now, and your faith is beginning to pull him this away. It's a little bit hard because the audience here, this impact sitting right against me this way, moving down with faith up there and moving, you see, which is causing a little interference, but that, that's all I see. It's, it's just like a radio dial. It's just everywhere. But you are, you're, you're suffering with some kind of a, it's in the lower organ. I see an examination of something going on there. It's in the bladder, isn't it? It's the bladder. It's a, it's a cancer, mother, on the bladder. You have other ailments too, don't you? Heart trouble, and, isn't that right? Yeah. Mother a whole lot. Yeah. I see you trying to get your breath catching like that. You do that much, don't you? Mm -hmm. Wearing kind of a light, checkered looking dress when you were doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, no. All right. You, you're, you're a stranger here, dear. You're not from this, this place, are you? No. You come from Pennsylvania, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little city, a lot of trees and things around. Isn't that true? Right. Mother, come here. Just Dear Heavenly Father, I pray thee to be merciful to our dear sister, to heal her of this hideous demon that's trying to take her life. May it leave her and never return. May this great pressure against her poor heart Grant, Lord, that she'll have many more happy days. Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, come out from the woman. We curse thee as Christian believers in the name of the Lord Jesus that you depart from this woman going to outer darkness and bother her no more. Now, just a moment. Yes, Mother dear. It has left you now. You go back to Pennsylvania and you rejoice. I see another. The city you're from begins starts with a P, too, doesn't it? Now, sir, how do I keep going on? Let us say, praise be to God, to our Lord Jesus Christ, who gives us the victory. Now, we have now. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. We have believed this report, and we are in Christ Jesus, and therefore there is no condemnation. God is working. All right, everyone, real reverend. And yes, the man's death sitting there in a chair. Everyone by your hand. Almighty God, author of life, giver of every good gift, send thy blessings upon this our brother. Satan's done this evil to him and wanting to cause him to be hurt. But thou art here, Lord, to make him every whip whole. Grant, Lord, is the spirit that binds him. May it leave him. May it come out. Give thy servant faith over him. Thou demon of deafness, that's deafening the ears of this man, I come in a challenge of faith in the name of Jesus Christ. You can't hold this man any longer. Come out of him in 
the name of the Lord Jesus. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Oh, brother, you're perfect. All right, raise your head. The man's perfect. You hear me? Yes. Amen. Amen. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, what I say whisper, then you say it out loud. Amen. 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 You say it out loud what I whisper to you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. He does love me. They can't hear. And you have to, with predominating faith, go in there. See, you enter into another line of, of well, there's no need to try and explain it because you, you can't do it, you see. It's in a flow of another world. Just believe, that's all. Have faith in God. God will grant it to you. All right, come to me. Everyone real reverend. Look here. What causes death? See? There's several things can do it. But you know, if you go to the doctor and you'd examine your ears, you'd say, not here. The, for instance, he'd say the, the nerve in the eardrum is dead. Well, doctor, what killed the nerve? I don't know. The only thing I know is what I can see. But I know that the nerve and test is dead in the eardrum. Or what killed the nerve? I don't know. Why didn't he kill it all over its body? Like if there's a transparent band around my hand, and you couldn't see it in my hand, it turned black and blue and swell up, or a doctor might come and say, now the circulation stops from here. Well, what stops it? It's transparent, you can't see it. I don't know. He can't feel it. That's the only thing that anyone can work on is what you can see or, or, or feel, or some of the senses will declare it. Now, here's what it is. It's the devil. Now, Jesus said it was. Do you believe him? Speaking in the Bible terms, he said, when the death spirit come out of the man, he could hear the death spirit. If the doctor can't tell why that nerve is dead, why it's a demon sitting there. It's cut off the hearing of that ear. Now, if I wanted my hand to receive life again, it's to lose this transparent band here. Circulation. If nature's not hindered, why, it'll function all right. Is that right? Well, that transparent band's got everything cut off, and so nature can't function. Move the band. It won't, might not be well right then, but it'll get well. Give it a chance. And if the devil is gone out, the man can hear. That nerve becomes active again. See? And the Bible said it was a spirit. When the deaf and dumb spirit went out of a man, he could speak and hear. Is that right? All right. How did you do, sister? I won't. Which one of these is paid? This, this one? All right. Sorry, I didn't see you. I was talking, and I didn't know what you was the one to come up. Now, we are, we are strangers also, aren't we? I do not know you, but you're a little excited just now. I'm not reading your mind, but this, everything's running through you. You're wondering. Uh, you're you're Christian. Now I want you just to try to be just as, just look and just try to let every nerve set it. For I am here by God's grace to help you to get well. And of course I see you're wearing glasses, and that's that's one thing that's wrong with you. Of course the audience sees you've got glasses on, mm-hmm. but there. In just a few moments, maybe the Holy Spirit will speak to me and tell me something concerning it. And 
I'll talk to you just a little while. Perhaps maybe in talking to people, uh, you can't with everyone because it's something that'll break through. I mentioned glasses just a few moments ago, and I felt that, you know, even a little thing like that, the Holy Spirit's just sensitive. It'll move back. There's something else wrong. Well, I can see that now, but I can't tell what it is. And But uh, God does know what, what it is. And now he is able to reveal it to me if he will. And then if I talk to you a little while and just kind of catch the feeling of your spirit and then whatever is wrong, God will show me what is wrong. And you you believe that, don't you, sir? Yes. You, your, your trouble is in your stomach. Isn't that right? Yes. Yes, sir. It's a stomach trouble. It's bothering. And I see a lump. Or it's, it's a tumor. Yes. Say that tumor's in the stomach. That's where the trouble's at. It's a tumor in the stomach. Is that true? Yeah, I know. Yes, sir. I never go. Say, don't you have a some kind of a, a diabetic? condition too. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's right, you do. Yeah. Say, I see that some time ago you were healed yeah. of the blood disease, and I've seen that blood change back. I see a big meeting. You were rejoicing, happy. You were at a meeting where there was many people. And I see lots of people, but it must have been years ago. You look younger. And the It was the night you received the Holy Ghost here some time ago. Is that true? Yes, heard it is. All right, sir, you may go off the platform now. Well, Jesus Christ make us be Praise the Lord. Everyone say praise the Lord. I appreciate that audience when he goes in. I couldn't tell what it was. The people were screaming and going on in the meeting. If the audience would be reverent just at that time, you'd hear what they're talking about, you see. Now, the lady is going to get well. She's going to be all right. She's going to be sick after a bit. In about 72 hours, she'll get awfully sick, maybe vomit a while. But don't worry. She'll vomit up that growth that's in her stomach, and she'll, she'll be all right. And have faith in What do you think up there in the audience? Do you, do you believe that with all your All of it? Having faith? All right. Just don't fear. Only believe. God will bring it to pass. Whatever you desire in your heart, believe when you pray, believe you receive it, and you shall have it. Is that what Jesus said? Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive it, and you shall have it. Do you believe it up here? No. All right. Come with me. the lily of the valley, the morning star, the root and offspring of David. See, he's both the root and offspring of David. <laughs> he that was, which is, shall come, the Alpha Omega, that's A and Z, beginning and the end. <laughs> he that was dead and is alive forevermore. He just got so many titles to we just call him Jesus, isn't yeah. it? That's, that's what he is. And he is the Son of God. And he died one day for you and I and the sins of this world. And his blood was shed on Calvary. And that holy, unadulterated blood. Mary knew nothing about any man. God Jehovah moved over Mary and created a blood cell in her womb that brought forth the Son of God. Do you believe that? Yes, I do. Then he shed that blood, which every baby is the blood of its father, not of its mother, of its father. The blood cell comes from the male sex. And that had to be in that case, because God is, is the father of Jesus Christ, and his blood is holy, unadulterated blood, that he offered that to God, and a... In a place of our 
sinful blood, born in sin by our confession, God transforms all of our sins on him, and he pays the price, and we are free. Isn't that wonderful? And to think just as sure as God raised him out of the grave, sitting at his right hand tonight, making intercessions upon our confession, that same God has promised and swore to this covenant that we that are in Christ Jesus, born into that body, shall come forth in that body to be his bride. And is God taken from Adam a rib and made Eve out of it? He taken from the side of Christ and made the church out of it. And we together will walk in the paradise of God someday. Won't that be wonderful? Yes, we do. <laughs> And you won't have some trouble there, and you haven't got it anymore now. <laughs> Go eat what you want to. You had ulcers in the stomach, and they're gone. Eat anything you want to, Mother. Your faith has made you well. Let's say praise the Lord. All right. Baby. Come in. Oh, what a glorious feeling moving from that audience now. Such a marvelous faith. Looks like it just anything could happen. Just looking here, friends, how, how would we have to have a, a two dozen come up here in a prayer line? It shouldn't be. If one person, if it's proven to be the truth, then that settles it. And I, God wouldn't let me tell you part truth and not the rest of the truth. He wouldn't stand for that. God is all truth. And remember, I tell you, the same God that, that you're revealing this, this is by a spiritual gift that he has given to me to vindicate his presence with you all. And just as he is willing to heal here, he's willing to, that's his attitude towards every one of you. Every one of you. He's just as willing. He never died just for this person or that person or that person. He's died for all of you. Praise be to God. He died to make all of you well. And then his attitude is just as dear to you. His is just the same to you. He loves you just as much as he does that colored sister who was just healed just now of his sunny trouble. He loves you just as much as he did Congressman Upshaw. There has been crippled for 66 years in the field. He loves you just as much as Florence Nightingale, who on that cancer over her stomach and was gone to probably 30 pounds of weight at 35. And now it weighs 155 or 60 pounds. His attitude towards you with cancer is just the same as hers. If God can heal one person here with cancer, he can heal every one of you with cancer. And he has healed every one of you that's got cancer. The only thing you have to do is just accept it. And I am just his servant here in a vindication that he, through his grace, might come down on me and speak to this channel and to, to vindicate his presence with you. He isn't dead. He isn't in the grave. Neither is he on the cross. But he's with you, even in you, and will be until the end of the age. Now that is true. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. See? If you know the truth. Now that is the truth. If I speak these things, here stands a woman. Uh, I don't know you. I've never seen you in my life. Know nothing of you. Well, then, you just got a prayer card out there and was called in the line, and here you stand. Is that right? Now, if there's anything, if I can tell you what this is a disease that you have in your body, then that ought to prove to this audience that it's the truth come from God. Is that right? Now, if looking this way out in this audience, if God will reveal to me what's wrong with this lady here, will you believe it? Amen. And will you accept it before you and know that he's the high priest of your confession? Setting out this right hand of the Father to make intercession for anything that you confess he's done. It's all yours. The checkbook's in your hand. Everything that heaven owns is yours. You've got a checkbook. The only thing you have to do is say, I believe it. I'll sign my name to it. It's mine. Go right on out believing it, testifying of it, and you'll get well. See? Amen. I say that once in a while to kind of make myself a little stronger so I can go longer. All right, sister. If God will reveal to me what's wrong with you, and just tell you here, you know his presence is close enough to make you well. Is that right? All right, what about the kidney trouble you had? 
Okay. Go off the platform as well. Let's say praise be to God. Have faith. Don't doubt. Now her only weakness there is from the Holy Spirit standing there. Have you seen it? How it was wrapping her up? That's the reason I know as soon as I looked at her again, I know what was wrong with her. Because her face was moving right in, you see. I could feel it pulling from me. I was getting weaker and weaker. She was healed of that while she was standing here, you see. I knew what she had. You believe? Up in the audience there, you believe? That's fine. God bless you. You out in here believe? Oh, how wonderful. And up in here. All right, that's wonderful. All right. Now, here's another lady. I don't know her, but she's a Christian, and she has faith. She's a believer, and God can reveal to me what's wrong with the woman. If he can reveal what's wrong with this woman, he could reveal what's wrong with that woman or that wo person or this one here or that one up there or over here, wherever. Is that right? Just wherever you set your mind and watch, it would take place. Do you believe that? And have faith. Look here, sister. Do you believe me as God's prophet? You do? What if I told you that tumor would pass from you? Would you believe it? Yeah. All right, go and believe it, and you shall receive it. What you want. Let's say praise be to God. Now, you don't have to have a prayer card. The only thing you have to have is faith. <laughs> you believe that, Mother? With all your heart? You had heart trouble, didn't you? All right, stand on your feet. Jesus Christ is healed. That's right, the lady with the black eye. That's right. Receive your healing, sister. It's over now. You can go. Go home be well. Thank you. Amen. Have faith in God. You can feel that that glorious feeling here. Not only is the angel of the Lord here tonight, but the Holy Spirit here. Or the angel of the Lord, it seems to be a kind of a settle. But the Holy Spirit makes the people rejoice and happy, you see. And that's what does it. Oh, how wonderful. His ways are past finding out, aren't they? He lives, he lives, I know he lives. He lives within my heart. How do you do, sister? You're a type of person that once believing, you believe. It's kind of hard for you to see it. You do a lot of worrying about things, cross bridges before you get to them, build castles that never come to pass. Because that's your nature. But if you will believe me as God's prophet, you do, all right, the diabetes will leave you. And you can go home and be well. you believe that? Go ahead. And if you have believed, you can receive. God bless you in the name of the Lord. Let's say praise be to God. Now, before I look at this woman, I can tell there's something tearing at her right now. A woman's got something seriously wrong. How do you do, sister? What a day. Death. Now what? I'm not sure. Just a moment. Cancer, do. Now, everyone reverent and bow your head. Almighty God, author of life, Giver of every good gift, send thy blessings upon this poor mortal, knowing that she can't stay here much longer unless you help her. 
free her, Lord. Give her days of freedom yet, as she dies now. But may the Spirit of God come up on her and help her and bless her. Satan, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I ask that you come from this woman. Come out of her. I adjure thee to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of her. Hear me now. You're all right now. There you are. You okay now? You had cancer too, didn't you? You're go off the platform rejoicing and be made well. You had your hearing and your healing. So let's give God praise, everybody. Let's give God praise. The woman has been under surgery and everything. Cancer and everything. But if, if she'll just only have faith now, so to leave her and be gone. It's, it's gone now. Just keep her away from unbelievers and things. Doctors have told her there was no hope at all. They give her up or sick. She, she was deaf, but now she hears. Oh my, just as sure as the death spirit went from her, the cancer life went from her. And she's going to live because Christ lives in her place to make intercession for her at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty. All right, come Believe us, thou, with all your heart. With all my heart. That's where your trouble that was in your heart. You had heart trouble. Is that right? I want you to put your hand on mine. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my healer for heart trouble right now. Lord, I accept you as my healer for my heart trouble right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive your blessing. Off the platform rejoicing. Say, praise the Lord. Say, sir, you had the same thing, didn't you? Yes, you're going off the platform. You got well. Say, praise the Lord. Let's say, praise the Lord. God is here. He's all omnipotent. The healer of every disease. The Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end. Every once in a while, I keep seeing the Spirit of God hang over a lady over there with a red dress on, sitting right down there. I don't know what it is, but she's either been blessed or healed or something. If, if the lady's sitting there with a red dress on, it keeps moving out and hangs over. I don't know what it is. All right. Are you, are you a Christian lady? She was healed in one of the previous Oh, were you, you been healed? Well, that's what it is. Amen. I don't remember. These things, uh, they tell me what happens in the meeting. It seems to me like I dreamed it or something. And right now, if this audience would only know how I felt, my hands feel larger, my lips feel thick, and when that spirit comes down, I just have to listen to myself to see what I'm saying. It isn't me. It just takes a hold and says it, you see. It does the talking, not me. I have nothing to do with it. All right. Be reverent, everyone. Believe with all your heart. God will bring it to pass. All right. How do you do, sister? My, I believe you're a nice little mother. You have a wonderful feeling to your spirit. Moving seems to be so welcome. If it's been suffering for quite a bit, oh. had an old trouble that's bothered you a long time. You know what I'm speaking of. Then you've also got a tumor. You've been bothered with heart trouble, but Jesus makes you whole right where you stand. Your, your accepting of it is what does the work for you. You're he for going off the platform rejoicing. Just a little still faith, just, just enough to... She was under kind of the influence. She didn't know what was taking place all at once, but the reason I didn't talk to her no more than what I did. Lots more to her life, but I'm sure she understands. Jesus told the woman at the well, just let's give God praise. She's just coming out of it now to know what's all happening. Let's say praise the Lord. How wonderful. All right. Everybody ready. Let me come sit there. <clears throat> he 
He's certainly wonderful, isn't he? Yes, to think that he would come down here and do these things for us and bring himself present. See, I, I, I can do nothing of myself. I am just his servant. And if I would say that I would do that, I'd be telling something that wasn't true. For I, I cannot do that. I have no control of it. I do not control it. It controls me. It's the one who leads me and tells me. Now, we are strangers, I believe. All through your life, you've had a hunger, haven't you? And now here in these days that you're coming to now, yes, I see something coming before me. It's a, oh yes, you have a stomach trouble, don't you? Isn't that right? Yes. You've never served God like you wanted to. You've never entered into that place that you've hungered and thirsted for. Isn't that right? Yes. Do you want to receive him? Yes. May the Lord Jesus heal you and fill you with his spirit until your heart is bubbling over with his grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask it. Amen. Go now and receive, sister, in the name of Jesus. Let's say praise the Lord. Have faith in God. It's such a full of blacks right out through here. I, I honestly, my dear brother, sister, if you would just enter into that other that other dimension into that realm just don't think about what how sick you are if you just move on up in there to God where you can touch him something's going to happen in a few minutes if you just get up there see and believe now have faith believe with all your heart God is here to bring it to pass there's somebody right in there keeps pulling on something right in that way I can't place where it's at but uh, my attention just keeps pulling up into that that uh, sphere right up in there. If somebody praying, but there's so much between me, I can't locate who you are. Have faith. Now, when I said that, it changes and comes over on this side. Here it is pulling from here. Believe. Do you? What if the Holy Spirit was sure to just tell you what was wrong with you, Mother? Would you believe it? Yes. All right. Your heart trouble's gone. Oh, okay. Your female trouble. <laughs> Let's say praise be to God. Just childlike simplicity. Look, live, and believe. Have faith now. Believe that God is and a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Do you believe that? With all your heart? All right. Oh, I see you right now it's in her ears. She's death spirit on it. Almighty God, author of life and giver of every good gift. Send thy blessings upon this woman and heal her. Thou art here, Lord, and this devil knows that his time has come. This woman entering into this sphere of faith here, he knows that he's got to lose. He can't hold her any longer. Thou, death spirit, come out of her. In the name of Jesus Christ, I charge thee to leave the woman. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? This yes. was in the ear that's been deaf all that yes. time. Do you hear me? Yes. Say amen. Amen. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Amen. amen. You are healed, sister. Amen. Go on your road and rejoice. Let's say praise be to God. How marvelous. Have faith. You with your hand up, what do you think about it? 
You want me to say something to you, didn't you? I'm not reading your mind. Do you believe me as this prophet? There's something wrong with you. It's been wrong a long time, hasn't it? You've got migraine headaches. Isn't that right? Stand up on your feet and receive your healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's say praise be to God. Have faith in God. Don't doubt. Only believe. What are you sitting there, colored lady? With your hand up. Do you believe I am God's prophet? That he sent me to help you? Do you believe that I will be able by God to know what's wrong with you? You've had a misunderstood life, haven't you? Many times, many heartaches and trials you've went through. I see something dark, street hanging down a long road behind you. But you've changed now. You're suffering with a stomach trouble, aren't you? Isn't that right? Stand up on your feet and receive your healing in the name of the Lord Jesus to be made well. Let's say praise be to God. back there, sitting there with that yellow looking, uh, yeah, he kept looking this way so sincerely. You were praying a few moments ago. I noticed you. I felt something pull me. I don't know what's wrong with you yet, but God is able to reveal to me and tell me what is wrong with you. Do you believe that? Would you stand up just a minute? So you get above the boy here in front of me and the lady's trying to pull just a moment. I can get you just above the rest. Do you believe me as this prophet? Do you believe that what I've said is the truth? Your faith, you believe in God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You believe in them and you believe in me as his prophet. Is that right? It's a blood condition. You're anemia. Is that right? Raise up your hand. Receive your healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's praise God. There's just another lady sitting by you there with a pink looking hat on. Sitting there praying. You believe, lady? You do. You believe me to be his prophet? You accept it the same way to believe that I'll be able to tell you what's wrong with you and you'll believe the presence of God is here and my testimony that Jesus Christ healed you 1900 years ago is made visible to you now. Do you believe that? Nervous condition, isn't that right? You think you're losing your mind and everything. See, you just the devil beating you around the stump every way. Is that right? Go home in the name of the Lord Jesus and receive your healing for he has made you well. Let's say praise be to God. Here sits a poor woman sitting here, her hands wiggling around the air, a young looking girl. Yes, there's something strange about that woman. I feel now a real strange spirit moving from her. Oh, it's right down here by this end. It's a young looking woman. If something's beating right now, just as hard as like a dark breath coming this way. It's horrible looking. Or oh, it's epilepsy. This lady sitting on the end here is a sufferer of epilepsy. Is that right, lady? If it is, stand up on your feet. The Lord Jesus Christ bless you, lady, and take those things from you. Name of Jesus Christ. Come out, Satan. 
Washington, 